Hi, everyone. So I'm going to respond to what I've discovered people think power is. Now, my surname's power. Um, there's been so much I've heard about power, unleashed the power within decades ago. Um, and then lately, we started off with a program called the Personal Power Masterclass. And that morphed or transmuted into the Power Cauldron. And that's where I started really not only sharing what I knew about power, because I'm going to address that very directly now, but I started discovering what power in a very intimate feeling way is and began to discover that most people don't know what power is or they know it, but they think it's something else. And the first thing is power is not strength. It's really important to get clear. Power is not strength. They're two separate things. They're interconnected. They work together. But power is not strength. You can see in the background, you can see all the little cities here lit up, the stars lit up, the whatever it is, moon or the sun coming over the background there. What you're seeing is the strength of the light, but it's not the power that allows the light to exist, that turns the light on, that allows the light to shine. Let's put, that's the easiest way of putting it. Power is not strength. And yet it's used in the media by people all the time as though they were the two things. They were the same thing. Someone now is in power. They've got the strength to write the legislation. That's not power. Okay, so what is power? Well, power is made up of two things. Well, let's put it this way. It emerges out of feminine energy. It's the nature of feminine energy to be powerful, full of power. It is not masculine. Secondly, it's not that it doesn't have masculine dimensions to it, but it's not masculine. It's not sourced in masculine energy. And therefore it's got, just to make it really down to earth and simple for people, it's got all those qualities that you notice in women, just naturally built in, curvaceous, soft, vulnerable, and yet such power when you, when you give birth. It's very obvious. The ability to glance across a room and change the whole conversation with one glance or to walk into the room and take people's breath away or to share caring in a way that everybody gathers around you or the ability to share wisdom. Not intellectual wisdom, but wisdom that brings peace, that brings that feeling. Now that gives you a sense of what you're looking for. It's something more sensual, more feeling, it has presence, it's soft, it's vulnerable, and yet it lights things up. It's very attractive. It has the ability to give birth to. So there are these fundamental components Power has two dimensions to it that have to work together. 
love and will. If you have will and exercise that without love, that is not power. If you have love but no will, there's no power. If you have love, but without will, it's not power, it's not the power of love. <laughs> so the other dimension it has is freedom and responsibility to exercise power. And I mean in the sense of allow power to switch on the gifts that you have, to bring out the best in you, to turn your unique light on in this world. You need freedom and responsibility working together as one. So let's just go back over that. Power is a lot softer than you think it is, a lot more vulnerable, but it's very powerful. It changes things fast. It has will, but that will combines with love to create power. It has love, but that love has to be exercised with will to create power. And that means you need to be responsible with your love and have free will to allow the power to flow into you and to light you up. Now, I often use this analogy of you can have a great refrigerator. I mean, the best. It's got an incredible freezer, a crisp, but it's just like the so many layers and so many temperature things in it built in. It can be double, triple doors. It can be a freezer in a, in a, ha in a warehouse, massive. But if it's not plugged into the power source, it's just a poor excuse for a cupboard. For that refrigerator to realise its potential, it has to be plugged into power. And then it can show its gifts, its strengths, the ability to keep food fresh over long periods of time for instance, as an example. And that applies to human beings as well. We have all sorts of gifts and strengths, men and women. But if we're not connected to power, we're never going to fully realize the uniqueness of who we are. So what do you need? You need love. You can't do it without love but you also need to have your will, free will, used with love, love, loving someone's will, loving your will. You know, I will do this because I love it. And what happens is a person, even as I was doing that, I'm just watching my body language in the computer here. And it's like, I just lit up. I see this with clients all the time. They start talking about something they want to do, they truly want to do, because they love, they would love to do that, and they just light up. Their eyes open, their face lights up, their body language becomes positive. Oh, yeah, but I've got all these responsibilities, right, that I have to do. Well, okay, so how do those responsibilities, how can you gain use those responsibilities to create greater freedom. And it's like, never thought of that. What does that give, give you the freedom to do? Because you have those responsibilities. Um, I don't know. And then they start looking at, oh, my God, it frees me up to raise my children into, uh, you know, incredible, to realise their potential. My God, I could realise my potential. I've always wanted to teach and I've got these children and this husband and this family and this community. I could, I could teach them. 
and all of a sudden they light up because the responsibilities that are bearing them down are freed up to work in a different way. And we switch on. And yet that's not like knocking down a, an elephant, you know, walking up and punching an elephant in the face and it falls down, you know, or 15 rounds in the boxing ring or lifting heavy weights or, you know, enduring incredible winters. That takes strength. Power is something else. As I said, it's more feminine. Now, this became obvious when we were beta testing the power cauldron. Because I, I've started sharing stories about power. And at first, even some of the wisest people in there were going, what? What's this got to do with it? And then it, was, it started to come together. So I'm going to look at nine dimensions of power. It's actually a tenth, but there's nine dimensions of power. So you get a sense of what it is, and I'm going to put it in real life. So the first dimension of power is to do what's right, do the right thing. Now, yeah, 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 we can think. But what happens with a baby? The baby comes out of the womb. What's the right thing to do? <sighs> Take a breath. Where does that come from? It's... Have you ever tried to track where a breath comes from? The baby's not sitting there controlling its breath, using breath control techniques, sinking the mind with it. It's just, <gasps> there's a gift and it feels like a gift because it's the right thing. If that breath isn't taken, the baby ceases to exist. Well, it dies. It's that simple. That's power. Power. The power is the. It was nurtured by the mother's power for nine months. And now it is being empowered. You know, if it came out doing. <laughs> Breath techniques like that, people would think it was weird. You know, it's soft. It's not strength, it's soft. It's and everyone softens. Everyone relaxes. Everyone enjoys themselves. because a new adventure has just begun. And then the next dimension of power is to allow yourself to be loved. It's allowing love into your life. Now, practically, that's what happens after the first breath for the next years, maybe decade or so, it's all about allowing yourself to be loved, nurtured, taken care of, fed by the mother, cared for by the family, the father, brothers and sisters, if you have them. It's a dimension of power. It's, it's very natural to allow, power is allowing yourself to be loved. Power is doing what's right in the situation. at birth, taking the first breath. But from then on, what's the right thing to do in this situation? What's the most empowering thing to do in this situation? It lights you up and that ripples out to everybody else. 
or if I do this, sometimes the most empowering thing to do is be humble and apologize because it just diffuses everything. And we come back to power, not defense, not attack, not protection. It's like, whew. and this is one of the things about power that I really want to, we're born with it. It's built into us. We already are powerful. I had someone make a joke about an email. I said, you know, it's only 12 weeks to power. And I went, man, my communication has to improve. Because I thought I said in a previous email, you're born with power. It's not 12 weeks to become powerful. If you see a seminar like that, shake your head. This is the power cauldron is 12 weeks where we explore our power together and share when we've tapped into it so that it becomes more present in our life. We help each other remember when we've been in contact so we can reconnect to the power. Because everyone, if you're not powerful, you don't live. Power is what keeps you alive. So the next thing that happens with power, and that means allowing yourself to be loved, doing the right, doing what's appropriate to the context, which takes waking up to the environment you're in. Like when a child takes the first breath, it wakes up to the environment it's in. It's like, it doesn't quite understand it yet. Spend seven or eight years just soaking it in. But it, I'm in a completely different environment. How do I operate here? And if I'm going to operate successfully, I need to allow myself to be loved. That's power. Letting yourself be loved. Does it always work out perfectly? No way. <laughs> but if you're willing you know, you have the willingness to be loved. You get empowered. As I said before. And then the next dimension of it, and you see this as children grow up and become teenagers and young adults, it's like, I want to achieve things. I walk down the street and I see young boys just with skateboards one after the other, trying to flip them and land back on the skateboard over and over and over again, trying to achieve things. Young girls trying to look beautiful, trying to attract whatever, young men, attention, admiration from other women, attract other women, whatever it is, it's that whole you know, it's switch power switches on your ability to achieve, to be young, to have a youthful energy about you. But it's more the young woman rather than the young man. It's that feminine, the ability to achieve through attraction. the ability to achieve through being who you are, owning yourself, growing up and becoming who you are. And that leads to the fourth dimension of power, which is a massive discovery out of growing up to be yourself that some people never get to, but it's discovering you're unique. I mean, a lot of young people want to fit in. Of course they do, because they want to do the right thing and they want to be loved. And then they want to achieve things so they can do things right and be loved more. And then there's this fascinating discovery that I'm not the same as other people. Power switches on the fact that you're a unique creation and you wake up to it 
And then can you allow that to be loved? And then can you use that to achieve unique things and be unique? Now, each comedian has to learn that. Sports people, what are your skills? What's unique around you? But again, there's that clash between responsibility and freedom, the freedom to be yourself and trying to fit in and, you know, using it in a way that doesn't crush other people in the process or separate you much worse where you feel like I'm different, I'm weird, there's something wrong with me, which there isn't. Every one of us is empowered when we discover what we uniquely bring to the table. So if you're going to bring that to the table, you then need to figure out how things work. Well, if I'm unique, I'm trying to do the right thing. I want to be loved. I've got things that I'm good at doing and I can achieve. I can achieve a level of success here that makes me happy. I feel loved. I'm doing the right thing and it contributes. Because that's where five kicks in. And how does that contribute? Because four is like, damn, I am unique. Can I own that? because that will empower you. And then it's like, well, how does the world work? And then you're starting to begin to take responsibility for the unique person that you are. You give yourself the freedom to grow in and then take responsibility for that. That's that fifth power. It's not being massively analytical, it's more a feeling. Is this working? Is this the, is, it's not just, is this working for me? Is this working for us? Is this working in the world? My world, their world. And you need to be vulnerable, open, soft, aware. You need to bring what's unique about you to the table, but acknowledge that these are human beings I'm dealing with here, or trees or animals or whatever, and they've got their unique nature as well. So how do we get this to work? And the next dimension of power is power creates the ability for you to be safe and secure. Now, people who abuse power often do that by abuse. They try and be safe and secure by abusing other people. And history has shown over and over and over and over again, it doesn't work. It never has. It's not the nature of power to be abusive. The nature of power is to be empowering. And that's where you have this sixth power of creating a safe space, creating security, where people can mature and become and take on responsibility, not just, you know, the freedom to follow their will, like the third power, but they have the responsibility to love themselves and others, which create safety and security. You might say that's mature power. It's almost like the passion of power is to create safety and security. In its very nature, not by conquering, but by empowering, by nurturing. by helping yourself and other people to grow and become more responsible. And why would you do that? Well, the next layer of power is when you take on responsibility, 
you freed yourself up to follow your will and you realize you're unique but there are other unique people there so how do we work with love in a way that's really responsible not mentally we feel secure we feel safe see this is feminine energy it's not about thinking it's about feeling this is the right thing feeling loved feeling successful i'm achieving i've got something great about me that I can contribute. And that makes me unique. I feel my uniqueness, but I'm sharing it with other unique people. And how, how does it, what does it take for that to feel like it's working and working based on love so we can really let it rip? We can be safe and secure. And then the product of that is people start enjoying their life. People start enjoying each other. It becomes a grand adventure, not a, not a tragedy, not even a hero's journey. This isn't about heroes. This is about people who care. This is about people who face challenges and use them to create something better. People who stir up their own pot and stir up other people's pot and then weave those differences together in a soft vol this is where the softness and the vulnerability of power is so important that you can mix the that's why when you cook food you often cook it to soften it so they can blend together better and create new tastes better digestion so that it can nurture you And there's this joy that comes from doing that. It's like, wow. It's what people talk about with win-win. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we've got to have a win-win because it's got to be this and it's got to be that and we've got to do that and that'll make me... No, it's like, you know when there's a win-win on because there's a lot of joy. People are enjoying themselves. You know, a rock band plays on stage and everyone's just dancing and having a great time. It's a win-win. They're playing their music. They're getting paid for doing it. Everyone's having a good time. You don't have to go and plan how do we, you know, process this into a win-win situation. It's just everybody's benefiting in their own place, in their own way. And this is so crucial. Power only has that agenda. It doesn't have an agenda to control or to overpower. It's just not built into it. When people use, oh, they've got the power and they're controlling and that they don't have power. That's why they're trying to control. That's not power. That's something else. Lack of power pretending to be powerful, fear of people realizing you feel powerless. It's weakness, not strength. Because the strength isn't being empowered. And from that point, when you're really enjoying yourself, You can be relied upon to step up when it's time for you to step up. When it's time to go to the next level, where it's time to do business in a new, fresh way, with a new, fresh outlook. Or somebody's got to take charge who knows what they're doing. And, well, this is exactly what I do. I love doing this. I'm willing to be responsible. I know I've got the gifts to do it. And people are supporting me 
this is the right thing to do at the right situation, I'll step in. Because the power is with you at that point. It's owning the power. That's the stage in your life or in the unfolding of power in, in your life and in any stage of life where you own it. You don't impose it on others. You don't educate other people how to be like you. You just own, hey, it's time for me to take charge. Because I've got the power. The power is with me to do this and others will benefit. This is the maturing of power. We started off with the child taking its first breath, needing to be loved, growing into an adolescent, young adult, wanting to achieve things, discovering it's got unique talents. Wow, if I can do that, I'm free to do what I, I'm, I'm built to do, I'm designed to do. But how does that work in a way that we can not only be safe together, but create more safety and security so we can go at it faster? more responsibly, more powerfully, and enjoy it. By that time, you're well into adulthood. You know, you've raised a family or you're raising a family and you're starting to mature into being an elder, someone who can step in when needed, someone who can take charge, not push their way in and take charge, or respond or respect the situation and step up to the plate. And that, at that stage, the commerce of power, of love and will dancing together, of freedom and responsibility working together, not fighting each other, the land of the free, but we're really irresponsible, the land of the responsible, no freedom here. It's like, no. How do we blend the two things together in a way that each is enhanced even further? And then the ninth dimension of power is peace. And what happens when we die? Rest in peace. What is the most mature dimension of power? Peace. Remember I said it's soft, it's vulnerable, but it's powerful. It gives you life. It gives you love. It gives you abilities to achieve things. It makes you unique. It makes you a unique person. And then it shows you how you can work that into what other people are doing without compromise so that that power that you have, you're powerful and strong enough to be vulnerable and to be gentle. Powerful enough to be vulnerable, strong enough to be gentle. That's a whole other video we'll talk about strength. And then to find that peace, to be at peace with yourself. See it in all the martial arts movies, you know. But it's not this. It's, it's like... And life will do its thing. Life is unbelievably complex, particularly human life. We add so much complexity to it, sometimes to our benefit and sometimes not. But the one thing you cannot do without is power. It comes into you when you take your first breath and it leaves you when you take your last breath.
and you've always had it throughout your life. And it's just wanting to express itself in so many ways, so many things you need to be vulnerable. What is right? Vulnerable to. What is right? How can I be loved? Where's the love? What are my gifts that I can achieve great things with? What's unique about me? How does my uniqueness work in a world of other unique people that are all different? How do we create? What is safety and security? You have to be vulnerable to find that because you're having to deal with so many people have so many different aspects to themselves. Open to joy. You know, if you're dead serious about a thing or really tough, it's hard to laugh when there's a good comedian or just laugh at life. Trust yourself to step up when the time is right. And live and die in peace. Those are things you need to be vulnerable to in life that will empower you. They will, that's not power. That's the keys that will tap you into power. Each one of us, one of those really jumps out. But all nine of them dance and work together in different ways within us. There used to be in legends, the nine women of the grail. The grail being a circle, a pot, a cup, a cauldron. And the nine women who stirred the cauldron, who worked the magic of bringing the power through and sharing it and taking each one of us through you know, metaphorically and often in fact, through the women in our lives. And sometimes the men who are really strong but have that powerful feminine dimension to themselves, they're really strong because they've been empowered to be strong. So let that just, I'm sharing this not even for the information but to just help you look at power from a completely different point of view, to get outside as the background, outside the set. And don't focus on the lights in the picture, whether it's the stars or the lights of the cities below. But what is it? What is that still, quiet, vulnerable, whatever you want to call it, energy, presence, that's allowing those lights to shine. Power lies in that stillness. Not that you have to be still to be powerful. It's, we jump on and say, okay, I'm going to learn to be still. No, the power is always there. We overlook it because we think it's nothing. I've seen 97-year-old philosophers wondering about what's the point of life and saying, well, I seem to have come to the conclusion it's nothing. And I was, and I was just thinking, listening to them, I'm 72, so at least I can question them with some sort of wisdom and say, have you ever understood how incredible nothing is, what it's like? The energy, the beauty, the sounds, the presence within it, that it gives us breath, that it nourishes our body, that nothing is really something, something incredibly powerful. And it doesn't mean we have to lose ourselves in that. We just need to connect with it and let it into our physical lives while we're here. Whether it comes through other people or the environment 
or comes from within us where it is all the time from the moment we're born to the moment we die. But can you be powerful enough to be vulnerable to the power that you have? And let that strengthen you, take your gifts and strengthen them. But you can use that strength with incredible gentleness. That's what I'd like to, I'm going to do another video on, on what strength is and how that's put together. But let the presence of power be present in your life. Don't let your mind say, oh, it's nothing or, you know, it's not. It's always with you. It's there with you every moment. It helps sometimes a lot to just stop and lay back into it and then be open-minded enough to let it touch you, to, to realise it's filling you. Even in your pain, in your depression, in your despair, it's there. And it's more powerful. It's more resilient. It lasts forever. So it's going to outlast all of those. And if you fall back into that in whatever way works for you, the right way for you, where you feel loved and you realise, oh, my God, this can take care of me in my own unique way. It loves me as I am. And then I can take that into the world and create safety and joy and compassion and peace with other people, then you've got a foundation to start with, a place to come from in your life. I've enjoyed talking about it. I hope you've enjoyed listening to it. But don't talk about it, get into it. And allow your mind to be the student, not the critique, not the, but let it open to feel it in your body. That's the unique gift we have here. We've got this body within which we can feel the power, which is at the core of who we are. And we can feel it in a very focused way, expressing itself in a very unique way and then share that with the people around us to the benefit of all of us and the fulfilment of yourself. Talk to you again soon.